It's a new season within the most prestigious motorsport in the world, and with it comes the latest version of its digital representation just in time for the British Grand Prix this weekend. Today marks the day it sheds off its early access skin, meaning access for every owner has been released. Though there are many features revolving around the atmosphere of the motorsports such as supercars and F1 life, the racing is still the main priority of the title. And we found a bunch of tips and tricks throughout our experiences within the title, and we thought we'd share them with you to make reaching that top step of the podium a little bit easier. As F122 is fairly similar to its predecessor, we'd highly recommend checking out last year's video as it still contains many similarities such as assists and calibrations that we won't repeat here for the sake of time. But also, don't forget to consider subscribing to this channel to not miss any of our upcoming F122 content. Anyway, let's get straight into it. The biggest change to handling this time around are the tyre physics. New tyre rules were introduced for the 2022 season that changed the rim diameter from 13 inches to 18 inches, and tyre blanket temperatures were reduced from 100 degrees Celsius to the fronts and 90 degrees to the back to now being 70 degrees all round. In short, the lower temperatures and smaller tyre profile leads to colder temperatures and produces much lower grip when on track, something the drivers have been facing all season. Warming up the tyres in-game is now a larger priority than before. Exiting the pits on new rubber requires much greater care on the outlap as taking the usual racing line will make an unscheduled meeting between you and lots of bits of gravel. These can be monitored on the temperature graphic which is on the fourth page of the MFD by pressing B or circle, where keeping the tyres between 80 and 100 degrees will be the optimal temperature for grip. Anything outside of this and you're going to start slipping around. This is much easier for the start procedure thanks to the new immersive formation lap mode. Use this time to increase the temperature in the tyres and make sure the carcass is within the optimal range before reaching the start box. To heat up the front, simply weave on the straight and apply the throttle through corners, making sure to use all of the track available. For the rears, hard acceleration coming out of the corners or from a lower gear while on the pit straight is key, where you're now able to simulate a burnout to gain a better launch. Using all of these methods, you will easily breeze past the entire field. Speaking of starts, improvements to the immersion of formation laps and pit stops have now been introduced. You can now drive the car into the pit box and choose the turning point when entering the pits, both of which can gain an advantage over your opponents if perfected. For the formation laps, a graphic is now overlaid in front of your pit box to show how well you've parked. Red shows you stopped too far away or beyond the box, green shows a good position and purple represents the optimal position for launch. The best way to approach your box is by reducing your speed to around 5 miles an hour, wait for the graphic to turn green and then reduce your speed even further in preparation, then quickly applying the brakes as soon as you see it change to purple. Try not to under or overshoot the box as this will force the car into an unideal position. Remember, you can also enter the pit box at a different angle if you'd like to replicate real life. As for immersive pit stops, this new feature seems to have caused us a bit of a headache recently, as pressing the button on 0.2 is claimed to be a late turn-in and leads to a longer pit stop. We found that turning in between 0.3 and 0.5 seconds seems to be the optimal, with anything earlier being satisfactory. This may be changed within future patches, but make sure to use flashbacks in a solo race to find a reference point you're comfortable with. Just like a car setup, tweaking one tiny thing in the settings menu can make your experience a whole lot better. It's worth exploring the vast array of adjustments to your liking, but we'd like to bring a few to the forefront which we reckon would help tremendously. Firstly, two English commentators are new for this iteration, as you now have the choice between David Croft and Alex Jakes within the audio settings menu. Whether you're a Sky Sports or Channel 4 fan, or simply have a preference, your selected commentator will appear within the cutscenes between a session. While you're in this menu, scroll down to the bottom and you can change the music to either be the F1 theme or EA's curated soundtrack playlist. This is also a personal preference, but the theme option is recommended for content creators as it doesn't flag up any copyright issues within video platforms. Finally, we have two recommended options that improve your gameplay experience. If you're a fan of using the cockpit view, you can hide the halo column within the customization menu. This is ideal for those that don't use VR as keeping the column on does block the view ahead and may lead to some unfortunate accidents. The other setting that helps with visibility is the virtual rear mirror. Even if this is unrealistic, having that extra mirror and not having to rely on the tiny mirrors on the side of the car alongside the proximity pointers makes defending that little bit easier. Be sure to enable this in the OSD customization area within the on-screen display settings menu as we found this to be hidden even when the setting was turned on. Hopefully adjusting these settings and many others within the options menu goes a long way for your experience. Now, obviously the best way to learn the track is through practice. We've all heard that as much as Christian Horner likes to stir the pot, but it is true. Practicing through the time trial mode does give you the best conditions possible to learn. 
Not only does this mode give you access to rival ghosts, their lines in replicating dry or wet conditions, but you can also try out custom setups from your rival or the leaderboard. The session info screen will tell you who is using a custom setup or not, and selecting someone will apply that setup to your car. The biggest point is that you can actually view what all the adjustments are within the custom setup box, which is why someone like Yano Opmir does not use them within the time trial mode, even if he's constantly at the top of the timesheets. Experiment with what you find comfortable and save them for future races, but keep in mind they might be useful for only one or two laps and not the whole race. One small point for those that do enjoy supercars, as these beasts handle in an entirely different way to the Formula 1 cars, hence why drivers are always complaining about the safety car not being quick enough. Give them a lot more respect on the corners, as their speed upon corner entry needs to be vastly slower than its open wheel friend. Suzuka's 130R turn is easily flat out in an F1 car, but try this in a supercar and you'll end up wrapped around the barriers. Braking at around 50 to 100 meters before the usual braking point should be a good marker for them, provided you've adjusted accordingly afterwards. These cars can also seem to be a little bit more tail happy, with the rears sliding the back out on corner exits, but this oversteer is way easier to control here compared to other sims out there. Whether you're a fan of these cars or are taking them on through the My Team mode, hopefully these tips will make them feel a little bit more comfortable. So those are some new tips and tricks for F1 22. As said at the start of the video, go and watch our F1 2021 tips and tricks because a lot of things from there will carry over here in F1 22. Have you picked up the game? Have you been playing it for a couple of days already? Or are you just about to jump in? Or are you still undecided? Let us know in the comments section below. Are there any other tips and tricks that you've discovered in your time with the game? Again, let us know in the comments below. Share them with your fellow racers. And whatever your discipline, please do subscribe to the Traction channel for more F1 22 content coming your way. But until I see you again, enjoy the British Grand Prix. Keep it pinned, and I'll see you next time.